Scott's Landing proved there's more to the suburbs than malls and manicured lawns. There's lust, greed, and betrayal. And Michelle Lee has been in the middle of it all since the first street sign went up. She is our special correspondent as Knott's comes to an end. Her look back at the old neighborhood is today's Inside Story. It was 1979 when Knott's Landing first aired. Primetime soaps were the hottest thing on TV, and we were a spin-off of Dallas. Patrick Duffy as Bobby Ewing brought his brother Gary to the California suburbs to start a new life. People and plots came and went on our cul-de-sac, and looking back, I'm amazed how much time has flown. Boy, styles have changed in the last 14 years. It's so much fun to look back at the hairstyles. I had so many hairdos. First the Gibson girl, and then I had my shag, and Joan Van Ark had that Farrah Fawcett look, and just about everything else you can imagine. But it wasn't just our hair that went through changes. My character, Karen, started out on the first episode as a suburban housewife. We're the um, neighborhood Brady Bunch. Three kids, station wagon, dog. And over the next 14 years, everything changed. I was shot. I was kidnapped. I was pill addicted. I was pregnant. <laughs> I, I was everything twice, I think. <laughs> I have a lot of fond memories from working on 344 shows, and it was fun to watch a young actor named Alec Baldwin make his mark and get discovered by the movies for his work on Knott's Landing. I am what you made me! Oh, and we were all in awe of and the legendary are. Ava Gardner who played Bill Devane's mother. And that Randy Bill Devane. Take it off, take it off, yell the boys in the band. And who could forget that sexy game of strip croquet that he and Nicolette Sheraton played? Well, gosh, what do we play for now? Don't tell me. Let me drive another one through the wicket, then you can surprise me. It's one of my favorite scenes, actually, ever. Because um, he's a hunk. <laughs> and, of course, she's, you know, pretty good, too. But, you know, not my type. <laughs> I don't want to look at the world through rose-colored glasses. I want the world to be rose-colored. Karen wanted the world to be perfect. But despite what you've read, things off-screen really were perfect. You know, when you do a show like Knott's Landing, people are always talking about who's doing what to who, whether you're on screen or off screen. So there were always things being written about us. But honest engine, we really, really adored each other. And um, I, I, they're very, very special family to me, each and every one of them. On the final day of shooting on the cul-de-sac, I was prepared to relax and have a good time, but 14 years of memories made it tough. I thought I was absolutely fine until I actually got out of the van and looked at a couple of my friends and started to cry. <laughs> there I was, this big fool. <laughs> For posterity's sake, I documented the last day and captured my friends Lisa Hartman Black and Nicolette Sheraton on video. Oh, look at you. Hi. Blue. Oh, God. How pretty you look. Oh, you always look behind that poster, Grant. Oh, no, it's a Panasonic. <laughs> We always had so much fun on the set and saying goodbye was so bittersweet. But we all feel that Knott's Landing has come to a happy ending. This is Michelle Lee for Entertainment Tonight. Thanks, Michelle. Nice job. There are lots of plots to be tied up, such as how Val Ewing comes back when everybody assumes she was dead. But like a good neighbor, Michelle won't tell what happens. The finale episode airs tomorrow night on CBS.